Today it's my turn to be on time. She doesn't know I'm right here. I don't know where she is. Anyway. I'm right here. He doesn't even know it. <laughs> honeybee. Honeybee. Oh my god, he's singing. Honeybee. Should we go? Honeybee. Should we let him embarrass himself a little? Gonna make some honey <laughs> for me. Honeybee. He's just singing to no one. Honey bee. Honey bee. Should, let's put, put him out of his misery. Honey bee. Honey bee. Honey bee. Honey. Ah! <laughs> I was taping you the whole time. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm on time this time. I was on but time. But you were on time. <laughs> but Seriously? I was hiding. Yep. I mean... Now they got the vocal stylings of Steve Jerkin. Which are right there. I mean, I'm sure we could put that on a B-side of someone's tape on mix. On the B-side? Of someone's tape. That was really good. Do they even make tapes anymore? I don't know. Give or me the microphone. Give me that. Seriously? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm guessing you have an idea where we are. Welcome to Zoo Adventures, guys. We're so happy you tuned in with us. We are. We're over at our honeybee habitat here at the North Carolina Zoo. And we're so excited to share, you some, share some really cool stuff about honeybees, kind of in general. And then some really specific things about the hive inside. We have a live hive that we can share some information with you. How was your weekend? Uh... Yours was crazy the busy. The guest probably had a better weekend than me. My dog got bit by a, by a venomous snake this weekend, so. Give her some awe, okay, guys. She's okay, because we like the snakes and we love our dog, so it's okay. Yeah. And I have family visiting, which is cool. Um, they came down for a quick visit. Um, so we did a little barbecue, had some hot dogs and burgers on the grill, which was fun. So hi to see those guys as well. Um, but I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend, too. And it was a really pretty weekend. Didn't get too hot. I was a little bit nervous. It was hot. But didn't it get too hot? Humidity is still there, huh? Humidity is still there. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's go check out some of these. Oh, there's a real pretty. Oh, that's a butterfly. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Let me come out of this little space. Do you guys know you can't, when, when, we're up, when we're up and running, you guys can ride that honeybee. Just right now, it's a high touch area. That's why I have gloves on too, by the way. Since, it's, since all this is high touch in here, I'll be touching some things. I wore gloves today. High touch area or object. That, that's a, that, what, that Wendy's kind of showing you a little bit. That's an old skep. Skeps are the old timey hives. Today people can, the beekeepers can remove frames from skeps, from their, their hives. Old timey hives, you can see, are these skeps. You literally had to break the skep open to get to the honey inside. But this is the new honeybee barn. I say new, it's not really new anymore. It's the 10 years old. But it's kind of fun to share. Do you notice know where, bear, you know where bees came from? Have bees always been here? Honeybees? Set the MiFi down so I don't have to carry it. <laughs> One less thing to worry about. Did you know that the European honeybee, the one that you guys see all the time, not native to the United States? Neither are dandelions, by the way. Huh. How about that? So, yeah. So, beekeeping goes back a long way. But honeybees, this is honey, by the way. If you see honey in the, hab in the bee space, she's going to tell you something about bees. And just by being there for you to read. So yeah, the honey, so honeybees didn't come over until the colonists came over. We didn't have honeybees here. There are almost 20,000 species of bee in the world. 20, did you know that, Wendy? No, that's an insane number. Isn't it? Tw I didn't either. 20,000, and in the United States, the honeybee's not native. We still have over 4,000 species of bee in North America. Wow. 4,000. I was like, whoa. Because we think bee, yeah. you go to sweat bee, and you go to honey bee. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 40,000 in, in, in North America. 
Who knew? I didn't. I think it's an amazing thing. So one of the things that people are really familiar with, and we're not going to go into the detail because you guys are familiar with it, the benefits of honeybees are very well documented. So I don't know that we need to go in crazy depth about what they're, what they're, how good they are for us. We know they pollinate food. We know that they're providing us with food and other products as well. We want to kind of touch on them, though. Look at all these foods. I didn't want to go through a big, long list and kind of just talk to you about them. But look at the, the list and the pictures of all the different foods. You guys have some favorites in there? You guys have some favorites? I'll share some favorites. Watermelon. You like watermelon? Yeah. I'm a blueberry kind of guy. I love an almond. Oh, I love a cucumber. Oh, sunflowers. And I got to go with your watermelon, too. Yeah. We had a watermelon this weekend, as a matter of fact. What about you guys, digital guests, you guess. you have some favorites in there? I'm sure probably almost everyone had at least one thing. I wouldn't disagree with you. Apples, the berries, broccoli, carrots. So many foods today are dependent on the honeybee. And then over here are some of the other products that honeybees are producing for us. And the amounts of money. That number is crazy. Isn't that insane? So obviously we need these guys in our lives. They do some really amazing stuff for us. And that pollination, of course, way, way, way up there. Beekeeper suit over here. How would I look in that beekeeper suit? Not very good. Like I would fill it out. A big marshmallow? I would fill it out. Hey, where are you all from? We were asked to kind of come up with, come up with a list the other day of where, our, where some of you guys are from. And thank you so much for sharing that from time to time. Because we just, it's just kind of fun for us. And somebody said, where, where are people tuning in from? We're almost all counties in North Carolina. Almost every county in North Carolina. We've almost hit every state. Almost every state. Come on, Wyoming. <laughs> I have a friend in Wyoming. I'll call. <laughs> That's crazy. Some countries? It's like, holy cow. That is so cool. Since March 20th, we've been doing this a long time. Yes. It's really fun to be able to share that with you and to see all of you guys tuning in all the time really is neat. So thank you so much for doing that. But I do want to share a little bit about the beehive, kind of what's going on in the beehive itself and where the babies come from, what's kind of the jobs. So check this out. So this little graphic here, and it's nice to have this graphics here and you guys can come check these out. This is the lifespan of a honeybee. This is the lifespan of a honeybee. Wendy, how old are you? Ish. I am 45. You're 45. Mm -hmm. Days. Months. A lot. Years. I, I keep track in years. You keep track in years. My bones keep track bo <laughs> in, in millennia. So you're in your 40s, right? Yes. The honeybee, the lifespan of a honeybee, if you're a worker bee, because there's different classifications, the lifespan of a worker bee is also around 40. 40. So, okay. All right. Days. Days? Days. So I would have lived and died a lot already. Right. <laughs> 40 days for a worker bee in the summertime when they're working. But look at some of, this, some of the duties that they've got to do. And I just love this graphic. And usually we kind of just share and talk to you and, and do it out loud. I think this graphic kind of points it out pretty well. Yeah, Wendy. All the worker bees are females. I just wanted to highlight that. All the work. Okay, we're done. Come down. Come down. Okay. Let's show them. <laughs> so look at the duties. They're cleaning. They're taking care of the offspring. They're feeding the larva. Um, they're making the royal jelly, which produces the queen. That's true. They actually produce a jelly that makes the queen. They make the wax, they make the combs. They, they're undertakers. They're getting rid of the dead bees from time to time. They're protecting the hive, they're guarding the hive. And then boom, look at this. 21 days, 
They fly. They finally get to fly? At 21 days, they leave the hive. That's, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to do. I mean, you have to wait till you're 21. Sort of like humans have to wait till they're 21 to do certain <laughs> you things. You earn the right yes. to do that. And then when they're out there, they're foraging for pollen. They're foraging for nectar. They're even looking for water to bring back to the hive. Um, but they don't do that until they're 21 days of age. Do you remember how long, remember how long they live? About how long they live? Plus or minus a little bit? You guys remember? Wendy said she was in her 40s, and that was years. These guys may go five or six weeks, 40 days-ish. They're only out and about for 11 days or so. Wow. 11 to 15, 11 to 20. They're not out very long. And all that work flying from flower to flower to flower all of the bees sisters because that's the only ones that are doing it remember the females do all the work in the hive they're only flying out there for you know, maybe 20 days how crazy is that look at the hive itself Look at Wendy's job here. Isn't it amazing? Look what she's doing with that camera. I wore a headlamp for you guys. You're so smart. I got my bat headlamp on. Your bat lamp. Let's see. So this is the hive. We tried to find the queen earlier, guys, and failed miserably. The queen's a little bit bigger than everybody else. I have not seen her. And I'm trying to look for a bee doing a waggle dance. Who knows the waggle dance? Who knows the waggle dance out there? Ooh, here's one over here doing a waggle dance. So the waggle dance is really important to the honeybee. They can't come back and talk. They can't come back and say, hey, if you go down the, go down the road about a mile and a half, turn left to the big old oak tree, find that big old yellow house, and they're right, right in front of it. You can, find some, you can find some flowers. Well, they can't do that. So what they have to do is they come back and they communicate by using the waggle dance. And the waggle dance is a, is a series of vibrations with their abdomen and kind of a circle eight dance. And we're looking for some that are doing the waggle dance right now. It's still a smidge early. I don't see any doing the actual dance. But they waggle that backside and then they do a figure eight. The waggle telling them distance, the figure eight helping them show direction. So the bees are sharing with everybody through sense of touch how far away a group of flowers is and in what direction to fly to find those flowers. The waggle dance. No, Beth, I'm not doing the waggle dance. Yeah, she's already asked you to do it. Beth this. did? Oh, see? That was an assumption on my part. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> she did it very early. Oh, she did? So maybe we'll show you the waggle dance. I still haven't seen one yet. I haven't either. I'm looking. The donation button is up. I'm going to come on the other side of the hive, Wendy, while you're on that side. We've the... already had three people donate. -uh. We are at $40. That is awesome. We passed 3500 you guys got us up over 3,500. Thank you so much. Oh, I got a waggle dance over here. Okay. I'm going to go slow, so I like that you wore your bear mask. For you me. like the bear mask? Thank you. I'm going to zoom in, and then you tell me if you see it in here. we got to cover the glare. Yeah, oh, bodies. I'm sorry, guys. The me. glare is a little bit. There we go. Where'd it go? It's hard to find on camera. Yeah. It's a lot smaller. There it is. Did you see it? That guy was doing it a second ago. Or that lady, sorry. Sorry. Here's another one. Here's a good one right here. Right here, where my finger trying is. Trying to find your finger there. That's a good one right there. Oh, Which side? Put your knees down. <laughs> We're doing our own dance over here trying to find out. There we go. Oh, yep, see it right there. 
Waggle, waggle, waggle. Waggle, 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 waggle. And then they do the figure eight. Oh, waggle, waggle, that's waggle, so waggle, cool. waggle. Figure eight. You guys ever seen that before? Waggle, waggle, waggle. Figure eight. So the waggle saying distance, the figure eight sharing direction. Bring that bee some honey. That was awesome. Whew. Sweet. I might go back to the other side. There's no glare. Yeah, no. That was nice. Thank you very much for showing that, Wendy. That was good. You caught that. We did have a, Got a our, question. Our digital guys asking, uh, you know, how many bees do we have here in this hive, maybe? Okay, hold on a second. Let me see. Start counting. One, two, three, four. No, I'm <laughs> just teasing. You know, I don't know how many bees we have in a hive. You can see twenty to 80,000 bees in a hive sometimes. So they can number crazy, crazy high. But in this hive, I'm not sure. Great question, though. I love the question. It'd be neat to see. So somebody has counted before in these hives, in hives in general, and I've seen anywhere between 20 and 80,000 bees from time to time. Working hard, making the honey. Of course, they're making the honey for themselves, but we take advantage of it, don't we? Anybody like tea, like honey in their tea? Honey in their cereal, oatmeal. Where else you put honey? I like to put it on toast. Toast? How y'all doing today? Good. Good. I'm gonna see, I can see a few coming in and out from. That there. tube's kind of neat. And we'll show you the other side of this tube in a sec. So anywhere, you might see some bees coming in and out of here. So they are connected. So the bees from the outside can get inside through this tube. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just got in somebody's picture. <laughs> My bad. Okay. <laughs> so many. So we talked about the worker bees, and we showed you all the jobs the worker bees do, and they're all sisters. They're all related. And they're all related to the queen bee. They're all related to the queen bee. Wendy is our queen bee. <laughs> she keeps us organized. She keeps us going, working hard, making sure that Steve's in line and on task. I guess we're actually worker bees, aren't we? Yeah, we're worker bees, definitely. What you got, Wendy? Um, we were having some people <coughs> guys asking what we do with the honey here in our hive. We leave it for, for the bees. The bees can use the honey. And don't our, don't our volunteer beekeepers harvest it from time to time and take it out so they can keep producing it? To, make, to keep making yeah. it, they could, yes. Yep, that could be. And you can see all those combs in there. Those are made by the, honey, by the bees themselves. So then it, while the bees are that age 1 through 20-ish. Days. 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 Let's never forget days part. Days. <laughs> yeah. They're tending to the hive. They're making the hive. They're taking care of the offspring. They're taking care of the queen. They are building everything in there. They're even acting as undertakers, as I mentioned. They get rid of dead bees. They take them out and just drop them off to the side. Don't want dead bees cluttering up your hive. We got a question or a comment? Yeah, uh, they were asking, what do the bees use the honey for? The bees will eat the honey at times when they need it. They can, they can store it, and then they'll feed it out later on as needed. It kind of, it's kind of made in a secondary stomach and then spit up. Hey, Wendy, did you realize that? That when you eat honey on your toast? Yeah, it's like on you're your toast, eating bee, bee vomit. Spit. Yes. I mean, but bee vomit tastes real good. <laughs> it is quite tasty. That is for sure. So sweet. Let's go look let's, where they're coming in. I want to show them this graphic oh, before okay. we do, if that's okay. Yeah. We're going to do some hive talking. Da, da, na, na, na. Let you do the same. Hive talking. Da, da, na, na, na. Hive talking. This is why we do no mm -hmm. floor shows here. At da, the da, da. <laughs> so inside the hive itself, we've kind of talked about it already. There's three groups of honeybees in each hive. There's the workers, which make up the huge number. Right? Remember, there's 20,000 in there. And then there's the queen bee. There's the queen bee. 
And it might sound like a, like a kind of a, an easy lifestyle. These guys can live two to five years where the workers are only living days. Now, some workers might live over the winter, so you might, they might get into months. But workers during the summer, then when you and I see them, are working days. She might be tw- two to five years, but she's hanging around with all of her daughters. All twenty to 80,000 daughters are in there as well. That's a lot of eye rolls. A lot of eye rolls. And she's also making 1,500 e- babies a day. She's laying 1,500 eggs every day. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the boys. Male bees are called drones. Male bees are drones. They got really big eyes. They don't have a stinger, so they can't protect themselves. Those big eyes helping them find the queen because their only job, their only job in life is to mate with the queen to make more bees. That's it. It's his only job. I mean, on the, on the scale of, like, jobs, that can't be too hard. Well, point. But once he, once he mates with the queen, guess what he does then? He dies. Oh, oh okay. So, mate with the queen, die. <laughs> and then, the worker bees throw you, throw you out. They just throw you out by the front door, mat. Don't mate with the queen. They'll take care of you for a little bit. And then during the off-season... They kick you out of the hive to die. Huh. <laughs> that's, that's welcoming, isn't it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so those big eyes on the drone, they do nothing for him but help him find. Nobody is giving him any kind of sympathy. The drone. So there's a queen bee making all the babies. The drone mating with the, ma- mating with the female to create those offspring. And again, all females. And then the worker bees... Hanging out one, from, from age day one to day 20. Working in the hive to take care of the hive, to clean it, to make sure everything is in good shape inside the hive. About age 21 to age dead, which is maybe 20 days later, 20 days later, foraging for pollen, nectar, and water. Wow. That's crazy. And it's going on all summer long. Wendy, you mentioned the kind of the tube out here. Hey, how are you today? Good. Awesome. I'm usually watching you. You are? Well, what's your name? My name's Catherine. Hi, Hi. Catherine. How are you? Good. Good deal. Thank you so much for coming out to visit us today. Thank you for watching us. That too. is so cool. Have you had a favorite episode yet? Um, the elephants, I think. Elephants? Are They're hard to top, yeah. huh? Well, will you go back and watch Honey Bee later on now today? you can see yourself. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you. Air five. Yeah. Sweet. Have a good day. Good day. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your visit. Had to stop. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's awesome. That's so cool. This is fun when we get to meet people. We've done, we did that on Wednesday, last Wednesday. We'll yeah. do a little shout out to those guys in a second, too. But you can see the, can you see the bees going in and out, guys? That's their foraging and coming back. And those are all females, all girl bees. How neat is that? And we don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. They're not going to mess with us. They got a job to do. They're working hard. Bringing all that pollen, that nectar, that water back to the hive. How fun. In and out, in and out, all day long. We saw one a little earlier that was in the tube that legs were just full. Just full. Um, Our quick shout out that we'd like to give. We met Catherine a second ago. Um, How about to hi to Zach? And Ella, we met you guys on Wednesday. Thank you for coming by and saying hi. They That's came, they so came cool. to the zebra habitat right after, right we, after we got done. Live and we had a conversation with them. Yeah. We found out they love Arctic foxes. And yeah, elephants. Zach likes the Arctic fox, and Ella likes the elephant. Or Ella liked the elephant. <laughs> that is so cool. So hi to you guys. Hi again. Hi so thank guys. you guys so Thanks much for, for watching. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, 
a couple other things before we leave are more about lifestyle for you and me. Wendy, are, Wendy and I are here. We're not worried about getting stung because a couple reasons, and you guys can do the same thing. When you're around bees, just relax. But it's so hard. I can hear them. As a matter of fact, when you come to the zoo and you stand next to that hive, you can hear them buzzing. Yeah. You can hear that hum. But some ways that you can protect yourself, as Wendy goes looking for some, uh, some bees, ways you can protect yourself, don't, don't go shoeless. Wear your shoes when you're out in the field where there's grasses and flowers so you don't get stung. Don't wear reds and blacks. They like those colors. You want to wear lighter colored clothes and loose-fitting clothes? Do you remember the bee suit we saw? It was white. And it's supposed to fit loose. So wear those lighter colored clothes. Don't wear flowery perfumes, right? Don't wear fancy things like that because it's attractant. I definitely don't smell flowery in the summer. <laughs> so don't do that, right? That kind of makes sense. So get, wear shoes, especially when you're in the fields, when there's flowers around. Um, wear light colored clothes. It helps. Don't wear the perfumey smells. Also, don't swat at them. <laughs> That's when they get angry. I'd get angry. You'd probably get angry. So don't swat at them. Stand still and let them go away. You're not a flower. He's just checking to see what's going on, or she is. So just let that happen. One other thing before we show you the craft is what can you do to help bees? And this is bees in general. Actually, this is almost pollinators, pollinators yeah. in general that you can do. Plant native plants. Let's go up in the shade. Go in the shade? Yeah. I'm hot. So plant native plants. Well, that makes sense. Leave some of the flowery weeds behind. Those are native plants. There's 4,000 species of bees in North America. They need those flowers. Let them grow up and flower. So maybe in like the early spring when you get a few dandelions that pop up, before you mow them down, let them live for a while. Great call, yeah. Those are the first flowers really that yep. come up. Dandelions are the first source of food. That's a great point. And then the white clovers and the red clovers, and all of those are amazing sources of, of food for the bees and other pollinators too. So let them come up. If you don't want them to seed, I get that. Just take the flower after it's bloomed and get rid of it. You can, you, pesticides are something you've really got to be careful with. Pesticides and herbicides, you've got to be really careful with them and use them the way the label says to. More isn't always good. So use them the way the, the label says to. And if you can do it early in the day or late, late, late in the afternoon or early evening, that's better too because the pollinators aren't on the flowers at those times. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So just be careful how you use those things. And then you can provide water as well. They're always looking for water. I have at our house, we have like kind of like a cistern. We have a, a water um, catch barrel on our house at the gutters. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets full sometimes. And I've oftentimes seen bees and even butterflies on it getting some water from that. So something else you can do is provide water for the animals as well. So you can provide those bee friendly. So you can be friendly yeah. by providing bee friendly gardens and spaces. And you can be friendly to bees by not swatting them and wearing those lighter color clothes and wearing shoes so you don't get stung. They don't want to sting you because they die if they sting you. Honeybees will die. It's like their last defense. If they sting you. They don't want to sting you. They don't want to die. They only live 20 days. They're only out flying around for 20 they, days. They only have like 40 <laughs> days total. Right? Oh, we just got another donation. Seriously? For $45. That's Thank you, awesome. Renee. awesome. Thanks, Renee. Remember the shirts? Am I good on there, Wendy? I don't want to. Yeah, you're fine. The and shirts are still available for sale. Anybody can buy them. Yep. They're virtual opportunities, guys. Huh. And you and I have been going virtual for a long time along with Wendy. So you guys can tune in for oh Wendy. I'm sure our friend our friends answering questions. Um, we'll put 
We'll put the link to that t-shirt on there. They're in children's and adult sizes all the way up to, was it two or three XL? I've got a three XL, at least three. So three XL. We didn't wear my, didn't wear my antenna. Oh, well now it's perfect. For, well, for we show the craft, we show the craft. Yeah. And while he's getting the craft, we can give a shout out to camps. We have virtual camps. Oh, great point. Um, you have our, the cheat sheet. Our friends answering questions, yes. I don't have glasses on, so you've got to read it. We've got Wild America Camp for rising first and third graders coming July 21st. July 23rd, rising fourth and sixth graders. That's Wild America. And then July 28th to the 30th, rising fourth through sixth, herbivore keepers in training. And I think that's a three-day camp. Herbivore keepers in training? That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. So, yeah, you can register for those camps. How about this? What do you think the bees are made of? Okay. Let's what are the bees? What are the bee bodies made of? It's an awesome little memory. Well, first of all, this craft is awesome. But when we zoom in on the bees, what's the bee's body made of? I see little ridges in the paint. How about a fingerprint? How cool is that? And now it becomes a memory of how big or small your fingerprint was at the time. And you can get the whole family involved. Oh, great idea. Big bees, little bees for all. So you have worker bees, queen bee, and yes. drone. Nice. That's perfect. There you go. How cool is that? Now we actually have two crafts today. The next one is really neat. It's an upcycle craft. If you haven't heard that phrase before, upcycle is oh, upcycle is when you're going to use products in a different way. All right. So upcycling, maybe recycled materials and use them in a different way. This is adorable. Yes. And this could actually be almost like yard art too, almost. or you could hang it in your room or on your patio. No, almost to that. It's adorable. Look at this. Tin can, beat up screws, pop bottle, different beads. You have the um, some Google Eyes and Pop Tops. Pop Top Lid. Or lid. soda lids. lids. Yeah, Pop, Pop. It's Pop. It's Pop. But you, <laughs> you soda people out there. It's okay, you can come in. How cool is that, guys? Are you kidding? And then you can hang it with a, you know, yarn. We've got some raffia. You can hang it however you'd like in a tree or on your porch. But it's a nice upcycled craft. You guys like the craft? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How fun. Nice job, Nikki. That is really cool. That's really neat. I might take that one. Yeah, the, the crafts that we have and have shown our digital guests, some of those tend to disappear. People yeah. put them on their desk. <laughs> That's or, true. Or the keepers might keep them. Yep, yep. All right, ready? Remember the waggle dance? Oh, he's going to do the waggle dance, guys. Beth? This one's for you, Beth. So when the waggle, you got to waggle the backside. Remember? You waggle the backside to show, to show distance. So a couple waggles, short, longer waggle, big. But you do, a, you do a circle eight to show the direction. I'm getting dizzy. I don't know how bees do it and not get dizzy. I don't know how bees do that. Whew. So their waggle shows distance. Oh, you tell them. And then the, they go in the figure eight showing basically where to take a left and a right. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. So that's all about honeybees. Special shout out to our keepers that's coming up. On Monday, next Monday, we're hoping to have some keepers with us. It's Keeper Appreciation Week. Yes, National Zookeeper. National Zookeeper Appreciation Week. So next Monday, we're hoping to have some keepers with us. So if you have any questions you've been wanting to ask a keeper and haven't had a chance to, that's what it's all about. We'll be in a special location to see some special critters. But we want to focus on the keepers that have made all of these experiences so amazing for me, for Wendy, and hopefully for you too. And then Wednesday is a taped version. What's Wednesday? Is it venomous? Reptiles! Is it venomous? Reptiles! I think it's venomous. Reptiles! So tune in Wednesday for venomous. Reptiles! Okay? How about that? And we'll be there answering your questions. Absolutely. Live. Absolutely. We'll be there with you just like always. 
So thank you guys so very much for inviting us into your homes this um, July, Monday. Your Zoo Adventures team, Wendy behind the camera, Steve in front, so excited to be with you. Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Moving forward, that's what we've got. All right? Thanks again. Stay safe. We want to see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys.